Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the best price for an Epson Eco Tank that you can get at the moment here in the UK. This is the ET2810, and currently it's around about £160, which I think is fantastic value. So, we're going to do an unboxing and see how it all works, do some practical tests, and show you how to fill it up, etc. So, keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is the Epson EcoTank. This is the EcoTank ET2810. Like I said, at the moment in the UK, this is a fantastic value for money at about £160. These things were super, super expensive. And when the EcoTank range first came out, uh, probably five, six years ago now, they were incredibly expensive. You'd be looking about sort of £300, £350. So as the technology has progressed, the prices have also dropped down, etc. And now you can get a unit which is an all-in-one. So this is a photocopier. Is also a scanner and clearly it's a printer as well so you can do all three things straight away for 160 pounds and the best thing of all is it's using the eco tank so you can use replacement inks so rather than continuously buying little cartridges which end up getting thrown away into landfill you can just buy a bottle of ink and refill it and it'll last for absolutely ages so that is an excellent thing in terms of the pc market in general other manufacturers are doing it such as hp etc but epson were pretty much the pioneers of it so features of this thing, so like I said, it's printer, we're looking at copying and scanning. It's also got Wi-Fi built in as well, so you can do Wi-Fi printing, so you don't have to have necessarily a Ethernet cable connected to it, or a USB cable for that matter, although if you want to, you can use a standalone USB direct connection, and you can also do Wi-Fi direct as well. So if you're, it may be somewhere that doesn't have a router or Wi-Fi access, you can still use an app on your phone to connect directly via Wi-Fi to the printer to either scan, print, etc. So excellent stuff there. And also it's got mobile printing. So if you wanna print from say your mobile phone, a tablet, iPads, those kinds of things, that is also supported. And as it says at the bottom here, so with the actual inks that are included, you can get up to 4,500 pages in black or 7,500 pages from color, which is absolutely insane. So potentially, Depending how much you use your printer, you may find you never have to buy inks ever again. That's a lot of pages. Now, obviously that is based on kind of 5% coverage for black and color, similar sort of thing as well. If you're doing full page color, it's gonna go down dramatically. So obviously do bear that in mind, but these are kind of best case results. On the side of the box, it's got the dimensions. So I'll give you a close up of that. It's also, you can use it in conjunction with the Epson Smart Panel, which we'll take a look at later. Also, we've got our print speeds here. So this is based on both the ISO and the normal range. So 33 pages per minute in black or black and white and 15 pages per minute in color. So that's kind of 5% coverage. You've got your ISO ones there. You've also got your scan resolution. So the built-in scanner will scan up to 1200 by 2400 DPI, which is pretty impressive. Generally, most office printers, scanners, etc. 300 dpi is absolutely fine for pretty much most things but you can go ultra high detail so if you've got some maybe old pictures and you want to put them on your computer make them digital then you can certainly do it at much higher dpi should you need to and when it comes to printing out you've got a print resolution of 5760 by 1440 dpi so very high print resolution with that do bear in mind you will need to use obviously quality paper in order to do that or glossy paper epson glossy that sort of stuff or specific photo paper but even with just standard run-of-the-mill A4 laser copier printer, you should still get some pretty decent results. There's also mention compatible operating systems, etc. So you can take a look at Mac OS X, uh, anything from Windows XP upwards, and Windows 10, Windows 11, etc. All that kind of stuff. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Direct, and high-speed USB. And it tells you there some more about the cartridges or the toners or the inks, whatever you want to call them. So the standard ones you get actually, if you buy them, they are a higher capacity. So these are what they kind of refer to as your starter inks, although they are pretty good. So it uses the 104s. So we'll link those in the video description. So if you ever want to buy them, you can do. You can get compatible ones as well. So there isn't any chips or anything in this now. So if you don't use Epson's genuine inks, then obviously you can if you want to. And actually, if you take a look at some of the pricings, I'll put some compatibles and the genuine Epson ones. There isn't a great deal between it price wise. So that is a really good thing. Whereas it used to be genuine Epson cartridges cost an absolute fortune, compatibles were kind of 10 a penny. And now, obviously, because it's just an ink thing, there's less technology involved, they can do pretty good pricing. 
So taking the unit out of the box, you can see here it is on the desk, and normally it will come with all the kind of the blue sticky tape on there to hold all the panels, etc., in place. So there is a manual included, or a little pamphlet, tells you where to take them out. Just unpeel all the blue stuff, it's pretty obvious, obviously, unless you have difficulty seeing blue, but it should be pretty obvious. Just undo those and it'll be ready to use. You also get a power cable as well, which is your kind of figure eight lead, which is pretty much universal these days, but they do include one. No USB cable installed or included, so if you do need to connect via USB, then do make sure you put one of those on your shopping list. Also, you get other things in there, so you get a disc for installation for software, so if you've still got a disk drive, then you can use that. Uh, there's also all the pamphlets and stuff to tell you how to set it all up. You also get the inks. So these are the Epson inks. These are the 104s. I would love to be able to tell you how much these actually are in terms of milliliters, but I have no idea. It doesn't appear to say it on there anywhere. So I'm guessing these are somewhere about 150 to 200 milliliters. Not entirely sure, but like I said, they should do absolutely thousands of pages from standard. So you get four of those included, the black, cyan, magenta, yellow, etc. And then you get the printer itself. So let's take a closer look at that. So here is the unit itself, and it's a, it's a pretty cool unit. Considering the technology in here, they've actually scaled it down really well. We're gonna be moving from our previous Epson printer, which was the XP245, which uh, you can check out from the videos up there or wherever it, the links are. That was a pretty cool printer, and for 30 quid, it, it seems to have lasted a long time. Although it has got to the point now where basically most of the prints do show severe banding. Um, even just doing black and white prints, it doesn't always look great. Quite often I find myself having to reprint things, especially QR codes and Amazon receipts, all that kind of stuff. So it was time to replace it. It's done five, six years, which is fine. We haven't treated it particularly well. It's in a very dusty area. So yeah, it is one of those things. And otherwise, I'm fed up of changing cartridges. It's a real pain. You never quite know exactly what is in the cartridge because obviously you can't see it. It's inside, you just get a digital representation in the software of how much ink is actually in there. Now the beauty obviously of the Eco Tank is the fact you can actually see it. So there is actually an individual tank for each color and you can also see from the side as well, some representation of what is actually in there. But this will give you basically height levels. So if it says it's out of a certain ink, you can say, well, actually no, it isn't. And it will just keep on printing and you know that it isn't. So you don't have to take notice of the software too much these days. Filling up is going to be pretty straightforward, so there is literally a flap on the front and that will show you the tanks and all you do is unclip those and then you can use your bottles, put them in, fill it up, close them up and basically you're done. So very easy to do, the flap here is completely manual so you don't have to go in and press any kind of crazy combination of buttons or go actually into the software and tell it to move the print head into the fill position, all that kind of stuff as you normally would get with cartridges. So that's taken a lot of that guesswork out of it. So this part itself, I feel personally, is a massive change in direction because you've got control, you can see the levels of your inks, you can fill them easily, and if the software on the other older printers says, no, the cartridge head isn't in the right place or you're fiddling around opening it and closing it, trying to get it to move out into the right place, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So that is excellent. Something to consider though is if you are going to be filling these up, do make sure you put the right color into the right section. Because obviously if you put the wrong color in, it's gonna make a real mess. Now potentially you can use a flushing fluid and get it to flush through, but essentially if you put the wrong color in the wrong place, then yeah, it's bad times all round. So obviously do be wary of that. Do take note of the markings and obviously it has got the colors on the top there. So you can see exactly which one is which. Something which they have done on this, which we'll move around sideways now, is actually on the back here, there is a removable door. So you can take a screw out of the back, which you're probably seeing for some B-roll, which I did a little bit earlier. And there's actually a collection tank here. So with most inkjet printers, they normally move the head or they kind of siphon off some of the ink so it doesn't congeal actually on the print heads themselves. Most printers, almost impossible to change that pad. Whereas this one screw on the side, remove this cover and you get a unit which you can take out and can be replaced should you need to. So that I feel again is another step in the right direction of being a little bit more eco responsible and not having to turn these things into e-waste. So that's on that side. On the other side, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. There's cat hairs to be expected. Uh, there's a USB port which is tucked away in there and further around there is the power port. So you plug your power into there, USB into there if you want to. When you're setting up the printer for the very first time, you do have to kind of make a choice whether you're going to connect via USB or whether you're going to do it wirelessly. 
if you have the USB cable connected, but you still wish to connect wirelessly for the first time, you will need to disconnect the USB cable, just pointing that out for you. On the back, you can see here, this is where the, uh, the paper goes. And this is actually pretty cool as well. The actual paper rest or backrest is just a one piece unit. So you don't have the kind of multiple ones where it keeps on sliding out further and further. So for your A4 paper, little flap here on the back. So you open that up, put your paper in and make your adjustments for the widths, etc. And this will take various widths and sizes. So letter, A4, legal, etc. Uh, postcards, uh, DL letters, all that kind of stuff. You usually don't have any problems. You can select all that in the software. So moving back to the front. So in terms of the paper feed, so it's obviously a rear paper feed, which is actually pretty cool. So that means you can use some slightly thicker stock than you would normally. So if you're printing on transfer paper, that sort of stuff, or even some card stocks, that should be quite a nice paper flow to go through there. You can also pull out this section. So this is your output tray and that flips up the end. So if you've got multiple sheets coming out, you can stop it going too far off or falling on the floor or your cat's attacking it, all that usual kind of stuff. So that's pretty good. Uh, you've also got a pull down flap here. So this is for your paper jams, etc. You don't need to access this really in normal use. Whereas previously on most printers, you'd have to open that to change your cartridges, lift up the top, etc. Which, uh, yeah, you don't have to do now. You can still lift up the top. So the top section, you've got the scanner bed, which is there. So A4 scanning. Obviously you can do slightly smaller than A4, but A4 is the maximum size supported. And there's a little arrow in this bottom corner to say this is the kind of top corner. So yeah, very straightforward to do. You can lift this up a little bit as well. So if you want to gain a bit more access, you can do. And for filling, you might find it easier to see what colors is, etc. And again, if there's paper jams, etc., you can get your hand in a little bit easier to uh, sort those out. But yeah, all pretty good. You can also see the uh, mechanism inside there as well. Redu Putting this down goes in a couple of steps. So you do that and then again. So it goes up in one slot, up again, and it drops down. You'll see there's a gap there. It won't print properly until you do it again. There you go. So that is their kind of locking mechanism. So I think, yeah, that is pretty much it overall. Uh, pretty nice little unit. It doesn't seem to have added much bulk to the actual unit by having the eco tank on there. Whereas previously a lot of them had it on the side and it kind of brought it out further. So some desks obviously taking up a lot more room, but this seems to be a pretty compact unit. So let's get it set up and uh, see what it's all about. So now let's fill up the ink. So this is going to be hopefully pretty straightforward. So we're going to open up our tank here, open up the stopper on the end and get our black ink. Now open the ink with it in the upright position. There is actually a clever little valve in the actual head of this, which you're probably seeing a close up from. And there are little grooves here and here which actually go into the section there. So I don't think you can actually put the wrong color into the uh, wrong socket. As we said a little bit earlier, these are kind of grooved at the top. So potentially they are all gonna be different. I will verify that later and give you some close-ups. But yeah, it does appear that they all are physically different. So you shouldn't be able to install in the incorrect unit. So all I'm gonna do is to turn it upside down and put it in and with the label facing outwards and just put it in and literally you can hear it gurgling away. So what it's going to do is going to fill up this section at the bottom. You can see there is the line gradually going up. Hopefully you can just make that on camera. I'll try and zoom in for you. Should take somewhere about a minute to do this. Now the clever valve inside of there is actually goes into the tank itself. So once it gets to the very end, it basically creates a, like a hydraulic lock. So even if you're thinking, well, the tank's half full, I want to fill it right up you still can do that and it will cut out when there's basically a full tank. So then you can remove the um, ink and not make a huge mess. At least that is the theory, which we'll find out very shortly. That appears to have stopped gurgling. Yep, so that's it, we're done. So we can lift it off there and you can see their ink is not coming out and there is, you can just about hear it, there is a little bit left over. Now the reason there's a little bit left over is because when you actually fill up all four of these, and do your ink priming for the first time, it's gonna take a lot of that ink to fill up all of the pipes and kind of cabling inside the unit and get it all primed and ready. So you will need to go after and top them all up again. Well, you don't have to straight away, but it's probably gonna be a good idea to top them up straight away as soon as the priming process is done. So I wanna go ahead now, fill up the rest of these, and then we'll come back and show you how to do the ink priming. So there we go, that is the inks charged up. And as you can possibly hopefully see, there's a, a very tiny little bit. And actually it does say on the side how much is in them. I didn't, don't know how I didn't see that before, but it's 65 milliliters. So for those of you wondering, these are 65 milliliter. Can't believe I missed that. 
so excited to get my new printer up and running. So power is connected, so now we can turn the device on, so we'll press the power button. I'll give you a close-up of the uh, front panel and go through that a little bit later on in the video so you can see what all that is about. But you've got a power button, Wi-Fi button, you've also got an information button, and you've also got your black and white copy and your color copy. There are combination buttons you can press as well, which uh, you probably want to look at the instructions for, or maybe we'll go through that in a separate video. Uh, you've also got the kind of ink jam or the uh, prime button, which is the end one. And also there is an ink notification or low ink notification here, and also a, uh, a paper out indicator there. So as you can see, currently it's got the ink button, and that is because this is brand spanking new. So if I just aim that up very slightly, you don't want to move it around too much once you've got the ink in, because obviously it is liquid ink. So do be careful. And you can see just there, that is our priming button. So what you want to do is to press and hold this for about five seconds and the initial priming sequence will take place. So let's do that now. One, two, three, four, five, and release. And now it's going to make a little bit of noise for a while. So we'll let it carry on and do that and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so that is the ink fully charged and when it's done, you'll see the... Uh, LED here is illuminated and the ink light has now gone off. So what they suggest to do is to make sure that everything is as it should be. So load up some paper into the back, which we've uh, already done, which is slightly out of shot there, and turn off the printer. So press the power button and wait for the unit to shut down. And next to perform a uh, print head check, press and hold this button here and then press the power button and when it makes that noise you can release it and it should go ahead now once it's done its uh, boot up cycle it should print out a print head test And there we go, there is the finished product, at which point then you can examine your printout and make sure that all the lines are completely full and everything's working. As you can see, this is no camera trickery. It says there how many pages we've printed. Basically, this is the first ever page off of this printer and it's uh, come out pretty much perfect. So that is what you can expect to see, or at least that is what you should expect to see for your first print head test. So that is effectively it. Okay, so now it's time to set the device up. So we're gonna go in and install it on our iPhone. You can use the USB cable to do it if you want to, but I think most people will probably do it wireless to start with. So you go into the software, which is the Epson Smart Panel. And basically, if I scroll through there, actually let's, uh, let's cancel that and we'll start again. So when you start up, you've obviously got uh, set up a new product and you've also got connected to a product already on Wi-Fi. So if you've got an existing Epson printer you want to set up with Smart Panel, you can do. But we're actually going to uh, set up a new product. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully this is the right way. Uh, make sure your product is turned on if a USB cable is connected. Yep, it's not, so that's okay. So we'll, it's now searching for the product. And straight away it's found it. So that is our ET2810 series. So we'll select on that one. Are you sure you want to select it? Yes, we are. And do you want to set up Wi-Fi on this product? Yes, we do. So what it's doing currently is using the Epson Smart Panel Direct Connect technology to connect directly to the printer. And then when we've actually reset it with its correct IP address, etc., so it then can connect to the router in your home or your access point, and then you can connect to it via other devices. And there we go. So now we can use the, um, the product as you would normally. And you can choose now whether you want to use cards or whether you want to use the tiles method. So I'm going to use tiles. So there is now our application. Now there is actually a firmware to update as well. So we might as well go ahead and update that whilst we're at it. And let that do the new firmware. And as you can see in the background of the screen there, so you've got options for obviously the easy things, print and scan, document capture, copy, etc. So you can do that and you can actually uh, do things like your print head cleaning and all that kind of stuff straight from the front panel there, which is uh, pretty handy. Okay, so now we've got it set up. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration now. Uh, I'm gonna try and print from the app, 
this may or may not work out as intended. So this is just a, like a QR code thing, which I had to actually show at the post office recently. So this is the sort of thing that people will generally try and print out. So you get the choice for what size you want. So I'm just gonna go buy a four by six for this because I don't think it needs to be any bigger than that. So let's just hit print and see what comes out. This is just a black and white image. So it should be uh, pretty quick. And I'll start my timer from when it starts. I'm guessing it's going to be about 10 to 15 seconds. That would be kind of normal, I guess, for this sort of thing. Right, let's cancel that. Okay, so there you go. I've made a mistake already. So this was the uh, picture. It wasn't the QR code. I actually selected two by mistake. So these are some fans which uh, came through. This is something you do have to uh, pay attention to. So in the app, it's to set to highest photo quality and also photo ink or photo paper rather. So it's taken absolutely for ages and it's basically super, super saturated, which um, it shouldn't be because obviously it's the wrong paper type. So we're gonna ignore that for now. And I've gone into the app and I've set it so that for, basically for each type of paper stock that you use, so A4, card, DL, whatever, whatever size you do, you can set an individual setting. So I would strongly suggest for pretty much most people, just go in and set it to standard A4 and kind of regular quality. So with that said, let's try and do a photocopy now and see how that comes out. So we'll try something a little bit easier. So this is just the random crap that comes through your door. So this is a farm food, but this is uh, actually quite colorful. So let's go ahead and try that and see what it comes out like. So we'll put that on the scanning bay. Let's just try doing black and white copy, see how that comes out. And hopefully it won't take as long. Yes. That's much more like it. That's actually quite impressively quick. For the sort of things that we generally do here, that is going to be awesome. And actually, considering this is just cheap crap paper, that's actually come out pretty nice. And there doesn't appear to be any obvious signs of banding. The actual print quality itself, if I uh, give you a little bit of a close-up on that, it's actually uh, pretty decent, although it's not focusing particularly well. So. Yeah, that is actually pretty sharp. It's not quite laser quality, but it's pretty close. So let's see what it comes out like with color. Clearly that's gonna take a little bit longer. Yeah, that definitely sounds a little bit slower. But it'd be interesting to see what the color reproduction is like, even on the kind of the cheapest possible Amazon A4 paper that you can buy. It actually looks pretty good so far. For color copy, actually, I'm pretty impressed with that. And there we go. There is the finished article. That is not bad at all. And it doesn't appear to be any obvious signs of any banding or anything, which is quite common when you're doing faster prints. So let's give you a little bit of a close up of that. If you want to get your half crispy duck at Farm Foods, £4.50, or your Young's 100% fillet, 15 fish fingers, £1.49. Can't go wrong. Happy days. So that actually looks pretty decent. And let's take a look at the original as a comparison. So there you go, there is the uh, the before and after. Obviously on camera it's going to look a little bit different anyway. But yeah, I think that is, uh, that's pretty good. And if you were just doing a quick copy, colour copy, I think that is uh, yeah, not bad at all. Considering obviously very, very cheap and very, very quick. And for the final test we'll just do something like this, which is kind of like your basic thing. So maybe if you've got your, uh, your kids treasured stuff that they've brought home from school and you want to photocopy it or scan it, Let's uh, do a, a copy of that. So this is pretty basic stuff, like IKEA instructions essentially. So this should be very quick indeed. That was pretty quick. And uh, in fact, that is actually very sharp. If it wasn't for the fold in the middle, I don't think you'd be able to tell much difference there between the two images. The definition is excellent. And I think if I, well, yeah, I did find it hard to tell between the two. 
and looking at them side by side, other than the fact that the paper stock is slightly different color, there's a little bit more of a kind of yellowy tinge to this paper. This is more of a white, but yeah, I think they look, well, essentially they're the same thing. So there you go, there is a, uh, an overview and kind of how to set up the Epson Inkotank ET2810. It's basically the same as pretty much all the other ones. If you go for the slightly more expensive models, you are gonna get other things like LCD displays and the ability to obviously do more than one copy at a time. Other things you can do, obviously, you can set your Wi-Fi's, etc., USB. But yeah, it's a, a very cool printer. I'm actually very impressed, and speed-wise, for the general everyday kind of stuff, using the cheapo cardstock or cheapo paper, yeah, this is going to be great, because normally when uh, CAF's printing out stuff like eBay purchases, Amazon purchases, when we're doing our end-of-year taxes, or monthly taxes, etc., this is a pain in the ass, and you never know quite what is printed out because it takes so damn long and there's a massive queue, and if it gets stuck or it complains that there's no ink, it's an absolute nightmare. So this is going to be one of those kind of uh, quality of life improvements. Yes, it is a bit more expensive than the previous printer, but I think just being able to use these inks is excellent. And of course, when you've actually done a little bit of printing, you can look at your levels and see what's going on and obviously top them up a little bit more should you need to. I'll put links for the printer itself, which I feel is excellent value for money at the moment. I'll put links for that in the video description. And also if you want to purchase some more additional inks. And I'll possibly put the other version of this as well, the one which actually got the LCD screen. Some of you may prefer that if you're doing multiple copies so you can obviously go in and change things. But I think for most people, general all round office use, maybe for the kids for homework, all that kind of stuff. I think this is a worthwhile investment. And in fact, if the inks last as long as they state they do, then potentially this should save itself its own money in the cost of inks and cartridges probably within the first year. So obviously depending on how much you use your printer, you may or may not find that to be true, but hopefully it will be. We'll be doing some updates on this, a number of little things. So as I find out new little quirks and features of this printer, we will be uh, doing update videos on that. But I think that's going to wrap things up for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit the subscribe button and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.